Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. In today's episode, we shall be taking a look at everybody's favourite metal box, the Chimera APC. This is an absolute workhorse unit of the guard, but it does come with a surprisingly varied amount of different weapon systems that you can strap to it. And as a newer player or someone who maybe is getting into 10th edition for the first time and is trying to adapt to the new meta, it can be difficult to know what guns you should give this thing, what ones complement each other, which weapon systems should be avoided. And so I want to take you through step by step what combination of weapons I would give this unit but also what units I would have this transport that can complement it and that can enhance its battlefield role. So with all of that said without further ado let's crack on and dive right into today's episode. So the first thing that I want to do is take a look at what the Chimera comes with as standard and what options we actually have available to this unit. On your basic APC, you are going to get a Chimera multi-laser, a heavy bolter, a lasgun array and armoured tracks. Now those last two, the array and the tracks, they're fixed. You can't do anything with them whatsoever. But the multi-laser and the whole heavy bolter, that's where we can start having some fun. You can swap out the whole heavy bolter for a heavy flamer and you can also get rid of the chimera multi-laser and give it a chimera heavy bolter or a chimera heavy flamer. On top of this, whatever weapons you decide going with in the end, you can always strap on a heavy stubber or a storm bolter and you can also always take a free hunter killer missile as well. Now, before we get into what tasty combos we're going to take, let's face up to some hard truths and just get the difficult bit out of the way first. You're never going to take the Chimera Multilaser. It is by far the worst weapon system. It lacks any decent AP, any decent damage. It doesn't outrange some of the other guns we're going to be looking at. The one thing it has going for it is one extra shot but even then this isn't necessarily true because it has no special abilities unlike heavy bolts which got sustained hit so it's all round a very bland very lackluster and by putting one on your chimera you are actively handicapping this vehicle it is not a great weapon under any circumstances and the only real reason to take one is if you are a staunch traditionalist because it is quite a classic weapon on the chimera or if you've already got your chimeras built with them but if you have the opportunity to swap those multi lasers out for heavy bolters definitely want to be doing that in addition if you're struggling to pick between a heavy stubber and a storm bolter for your extra pintle gun don't always take the heavy stubber it has superior range. It has superior long range rate of fire. It has superior short range rate of fire. It is better than the Storm Bolter in every single conceivable way. Similar with the Multi Laser, unless you've already got a bunch of Chimeras built with Storm Bolters, really, you want to be taking that stubber every day of the week. And finally, more of a positive note, always take the Hunter Killer Missile. It's free, it doesn't compete with any other weapon system, and it gives your Chimera some very welcome and much needed true anti-tank. Without it, the vehicle on its own, not taking a look at what's inside it just yet, is very, very susceptible to getting bullied by some proper main battle tanks out there. But with the Hunter Killer Missile, it can at least, on paper, threaten some heavy armor and it allows the Chimera to start punching up into heavier weight categories. Now that covers the most negative part of the video. It's all up from here. And instead of focusing on what not to take, we're going to look at what you should take. And the golden rule here is you should be pairing the weapons so that they match. This means that if you're taking a heavy flame in the turret, you should be taking a heavy flame in the hull as well. You should be looking at double heavy flamer chimeras or double heavy bolter chimeras. Really, you don't want to be mixing and matching. You don't want to take a heavy flamer in the turret and then a heavy bolter in the hull or vice versa. These weapons don't really complement each other. If you take a look at the stat lines for each one, 
the heavy flamer is clearly designed to be a close range anti-infantry weapon which doesn't really mind if the chimera is trapped in combat it has ignores cover it has torrent it only has a 12 inch range but it fires d6 shots so it's a little random but hey you might get 12 shots out of this thing but you are going to have to get very close to find out it's strength 5, AP minus 1, and 1 damage. So it's strength and AP are very similar to the Heavy Bolter, with the damage and the range really being, and the number of shots being the differentiating factors. Whereas if you look at the Chimera Heavy Bolter, this thing is much more reliable. It has less terrible loads. You're not going to roll double 1 with the shots from the Heavy Bolter, but it also has a much lower peak as well it just has that set number of shots so the chimera comes with a 36 inch range it fires three shots it has blister skill four plus strength five ap minus one two damage it's also because the heavy bolter will get sustained hits one and you'll get that both on the turret heavy bolter and you'll get that on the hull heavy bolter so you want to be using these weapons together because if you take one heavy bolter and one heavy flamer you might think you're covering yourself for every eventuality but actually you're covering yourself for no eventualities because you won't have enough heavy flamers to get you out of close combat if you're trapped with a, a swarm of small bugs or something like that and you won't have enough heavy bolters to have any meaningful long-range impactful dacker now you might be thinking, oh, Mordian, that's the video then. Always take a heavy stubber, always take a hunter killer, and double flame or double heavy bolter. Right, okay, video over, done. Well, hang on a second there, bucko, because the Chimera is a dedicated transport, and it has firing deck too. So if you just look at the Chimera on its own, you're really only looking at half of the picture. You're only solving half of the puzzle. The next question is, what do we put inside it? that can complement these weapons that we've been talking about, these heavy flamers and the heavy bolters. For me, if you're going down that pseudo hellhound route and you're going for the double heavy flamer, it kind of feels like in for a penny, in for a pound. Go all the way. Why stop with two flamers when you can actually outdo the hellhound and end up with four? Now, how you do this, if you want to make a disco inferno with the lads going to rage shooting the laser beams off and the flamers burning everything, that might be a good name for it. The disco inferno or the pseudo hellhound. You let me know which one you like the sound of more. Now, there's two ways of making the disco inferno. That is where you can put a catachan squad inside. Now, if you put a 10-man catachan squad inside, that's going to get you two regular flamers. This does give you even more burnification, but regular flamers aren't all that strong. They're only strength 4, no AP, only 1 damage. The advantage of taking the Chimera with the Catachans inside it, though, means that you're ending up with quite a lot of concentrated objective secured, objective control in one place. At the end of the day, whether the Catachans are inside, the Chimera are burning stuff, or they can jump out onto the objective... It's got a bit of tactical flexibility. You can dump 20 OC onto an objective and that might just put it into your favor. The other way of doing this, if you want to focus more on damage output, is you go for a platoon command squad. Because the platoon command squad can take a heavy flamer and a regular flamer. So if you were to put one of those inside and have the flamer shoot out the top, you would actually end up with three heavy flamers and a flamer in total three heavy flamers two from the chimera one from the Toon command squad the disadvantage is a lot less objective control potentially only five objective control depending on what else you put in the command squad because you do have the officer with his plasma pistol which shouldn't be overlooked you could go for a regimental standard in there which would allow you to if you dump the command squad out to objective to add 10 oc to it because they're one OC each and the flag gives you an extra OC on each guy or if you're like you know what I'm just not interested in objective control I just want this thing to do some damage what other options do I have you do have two other special weapons you could go for you could go for a melt or a plasma gun really have a unit that is very flexible it's got the heavy flamers and the anti-infantry and the anti-combat stuff inside it but then you've also got maybe a melt and a plasma gun in there adding some spice or crazy thought you go for like a las cannon and you're like this thing is pretty much all infantry all anti-infantry all the way but between that hunter killer and that las cannon if i end up getting paired into knights or some other kind of armored faction 
I've got something in this unit that can still contribute to the fight and not feel like a waste of time. Attention Guardsmen, this is an announcement by the Departmento Munitorum. Element Games is an official sponsor of the Mordian Glory channel. They offer up to 20% off Warhammer 40k and 10% off full action and other game systems. Use the link down in the description to save money and support the channel. Anyone not using the link will be referred to the local commissariat. Also, don't forget that if you use referral code TIM3921, then you will receive double store credit, saving even more money on your future purchases. That's all for now. Format! But this idea of going for a more long-range DACA tank really leads us into our second loadout, which is the pillbox. This is where you take a Chimera and really you're turning it into a light tank more than anything else. You give it the double heavy bolters, the heavy stubber, the hunter killer missile. Don't forget those lads going to race. That's a lot of DACA already that it can put out from 24 to 36 inches away. And then you put an infantry squad inside. Something that can take a special weapon and a heavy weapon. Things that are focused, again, on doing long range damage. For me, if I was to put an infantry squad inside one of these things, I would go for the grenade launcher as a special weapon. It's got good range. It's got that strength from the crack grenade. It's got the AP. It's got the damage. Really does have a bit of punch. And unlike plasma, you don't need to overcharge it, which could risk doing damage to the Chimera when the Chimera is using the plasma gun via the firing deck rules. Um, and also, you're not having to... That's strength 7, AP2, damage, one. It's, it's not enough. No, for me, the grenade launch, it's punchier. It feels right on the Chimera here. The other thing you want to be looking at is the heavy weapon. Out of all the ones you could pick, I'd go for three. One of three. I'd go for another heavy bolter. It's so nice, you took it thrice. Three heavy bolters... Pumping out the back of a Chimera really does give you a lot of sustained hits potential. You know, you roll a few good sixes, you might be generating both sustained hits and lethal hits if you've stayed still and you're taking advantage of born soldiers. So there's just a lot of DACA there. It does pigeonhole the tank slightly, make it really focus on just chaff clearing and doing damage to inf infantry, but it's definitely not something to be overlooked. A lot of DACA coming out of that thing. The other option is you go, right, I don't want to just keep going down one route. I want to have this act as a tank. And if it's going to act like a tank, it kind of needs to be able to engage other vehicles and have a chance. In this situation, you would look at an auto cannon or a LAS cannon. Now, the auto cannon is a bit more of a take all comers thing. It's got the strength, AP and damage that sort of line up with the grenade launcher they're in the same ballpark ish and so these weapons complement each other very well and it just gives you a bit of strength nine punch that you can sling into most units and even the heaviest army will still be winning on fives which isn't too bad or you say go big or go home this is where you put a las cannon on the infantry squad there's nothing quite like having a las cannon in your back pocket when you need to do damage to a tank you can try fishing for fives, those autocannons, those grenade launchers, but sometimes you just need that big strength 12 shot. That AP3 just kicks one onto the invulnerable save or kicks one onto a very, very bad armor save. And the D6 plus one damage just to tear a big chunk out of them. Just have that potential for that big seven damage shot. So if I was to, I think all of these loadouts are kind of valid. It's going to come down to what else you've got in your army. If I had to really pick one above all of the others, I would go for the Laz Cannon and Grenade Launcher option because you've got plenty of anti-infantry and you know, chaff clearing DACA on the Chimera itself. But between the Laz Cannon and the Hunter Killer Missile, it kind of goes back to what we said about the Command Squad. It lets you properly, regularly start to Barney with enemy vehicles. And whilst you'll be probably a lot more fragile than them, you've still got enough punch with enough Chimera to start getting quantity being a quality of its own you can start massing up this extra firepower but if you really want to take a chimera that is going to act as a tank first and foremost and as a dedicated transport very much secondarily don't look at the infantry squad the advantage of that thing is similar to the catian you can dump some oc onto an objective if you need to but if you're just there to do damage you're like this chimera is going to be a tank whether it wants to be or not look at heavy weapon squads that will allow you to take three heavy weapons and put them in the back of the chimera now you can't fire all three of them because the chimera's firing deck is only two but hey 
taking triple las cannon team sticking them in a chimera and having that thing in one turn be able to put out two las cannon shots and a hunter killer that'll start not only threatening enemy vehicles not only be a problem on paper that's actually dedicated tank busting right there and it's cheap as well all of these loadouts that we've looked at so far have been 130 points or less 130 points or 125 in the case of those cat chance so it's a very very cheap way of getting an anti-tank tank that also still has heavy bolters and all the other complementary firepower supplementary firepower that allows it to just side down infantry as well now we've spoken about heavy weapon dudes and large cannons it's remiss of me not to at least mention that you could go for auto cannons here as well if you wanted to if that's sort of the route you are leaning down but again i think large cannons are the real winner here and the final chimera loadout and one which i think is a total sleeper is the ogren fake taxi now i've actually talked about this before on the channel i did a video called behold the ogryn bang bus and i talked about putting ogryns in storm lords and also putting ogryns in chimeras because i've already covered it quite extensively what i'll do is i will link that video at the end of this one and i highly encourage you to check it out and you can look at all the crazy stuff you can do with ogres and transports but i'll briefly talk about it here for the sake of completeness but like i said really do recommend you check out that video that i'll link at the end of this one basically if you look at ogres they're only really 65 points now so they're very cheap you take the ogren and you put them in a chimera squad of three and you end up with a unit that costs 135 points now each one of those ogren can use their ripper gun from on top of the firing deck and interestingly they actually hit better than if you were to try and do something similar to this using heavy weapon teams with heavy bolters because the ogrins hit on fours naturally they don't need to stay still to do this and the heavy weapon teams hit on fives so the ogrins are getting their ripper guns which have only got an 18 inch range but that's not too bad and they get the same shots and AP and damage as a heavy bolter. So they hit better and they've got the same volume of fire. The only advantage is you are going to have to get a bit closer for it. But if you get really close, if you get within 9 inches, then the Ogrens actually have rapid fire guns. So suddenly you've got each one of these Ogrens popping out the top shooting 6 shots. So you have a Chimera that fires 6 of its own heavy bolter shots with sustained hits which should result about you know seven shots in total with sustained hits and then you've got the ogres which are also putting out of the 12 so you look at like 19 shots there and then you've got the heavy stubber and the lads it just results in a, a really silly volume of fire that you can get from this chimera and a lot of it is damage too as well so it's very good so the advantage of the ogren taxi is that it really does allow you to just do a lot of close range anti-infantry dacker it's similar to the the flamer the disco inferno loadout but it's not automatically hitting but then also it's got better damage so it's kind of like swings and roundabouts there the other advantage of the ogren technique is if the chimera dies and the ogrens fall out well you actually don't lose any of your main firepower because that third ogren that couldn't shoot now can he does six shots at close range, so that replaces the six shots that you were losing from the heavy bolts of the Chimera. But it's like you have to kill the Chimera and then you have to kill the Ogren to really wipe out a lot of this heavy bolter and ripper gun fire that's been slamming into you when they've uh, when they've got up close and personal. And of course, don't forget you actually have three Ogrens, so you've got some close combat potential there as well. So in summary, I always say take the heavy stubber. I always say take the Hunter Killer, never take the Multi Laser, take double Heavy Flamer or double Heavy Bolter. If you're taking double Heavy Flamer, take more Flamers inside of it. If you're taking double Heavy Bolter, either go for an Infantry Squad with a Laz Cannon and a Grenade Launcher, or start thinking about taking some Ogrins and putting those in the back to make a true, proper, light anti-infantry DACA tank. But those might be my recommended loadouts. But all of this is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. 
Are you a fan of the Disco Inferno or do you prefer the Daka tank? Also, are there any combinations or units that you think that I missed out that are well worth checking out? Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty so a massive thank you to bon bon vert mad larkin mark panconi rj scorpion swordfish trombone john stubbs Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox, August Vardy, and the Tommies. Thank you guys. Your incredible support makes a huge difference and it is a big part of how I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.